Repositioning kingdom purpose for kingdom living is our topic tonight. How many want to progress? And I'll pull out even before we get into this because if you're watching social media that is going on, not the things of the world, just don't, don't get on your mind in that. Think of the things that are taking place in the body of Christ, which is taking place in the spiritual realm. And so we see the evidence of God's anointing being released upon his people to take them into a greater uh, intimacy with him. And the purpose for that intimacy is found in the life of Jesus in the four Gospels. And even before Jesus was born, it was prophesied he would do what he would be doing. And this intimacy between Jesus and, and his heavenly Father, our Father God, amen, was a time where Jesus got alone. He separated himself from the, the disciples. Amen. He knew, he, knew the scroll, he knew the scrolls. He knew the Torah. He knew the scriptures. He knew, he knew all the word of God because he, he was and is the word of God. Amen. He knew himself better than he knew himself. Amen. Amen. And so knowing that his approach to the heart of the father was always one through Intimacy. Where he separated himself, there was no distractions. And there he heard what the Father would speak to him. There he saw what the Father was going to ask him to do. On that particular day when uh, blind Bartimaeus would be crying out, Jesus knew where to be. He was at the right place at the right time. He knew when the 5,000 men were going to come, bring in their, their wives and their children, that he would have to physically feed them. He would have to pray into the provisions to bring a multiplication so everyone could be fed and then they would go home with leftovers. Amen? He knew he had to be on the scene with the women with the issue of blood. He knew he had to be on the scene every time the father spoke him and told him where to, to go. He knew he had to be on the scene that through him, through his name, the father would be glorified in the earth. And so we see that throughout the scriptures there's, there's a, a repositioning, and we're going to talk about this, the repositioning of, of, uh, of uh, kingdom purpose for kingdom living. And so Jesus repositioned himself every day. It was another day, another place. And as a result, the manifestation of God's glory came upon him, and he did exactly what God had told him to do. We won't go into the burial and death and all that resurrection. Easter's coming up. Get yourselves ready for Easter. Amen. Get yourselves ready for Resurrection Sunday this year, 2023, because there will be a divine impartation of God's knowledge in Revelation of how great this Christ is, how he was, and how his life affects our lives when we call upon his name, all right? So tonight, repositioning kingdom purpose for kingdom living. And just a heads up for those of you that are online, <laughs> there was no live stream here yesterday. We had a limited, uh, a limited staff, so we're still, obviously, we're back on, on, on track here. But, uh, yeah, the message for yesterday was not online. Pastor Dave did, a, Apostle Dave did a great job on his, his ministering, so just give you a heads up on that. Last week, we talked about redeeming the soul. Again, we're referring to the soul as the land in our bodies. Amen. A portion of land. Tonight, the cause by re repositioning, giving chance to the land for kingdom purpose and kingdom living will be applied as we go through the word of God. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, your Christ, your anointed one, the Son of the living God, by the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, we declare your word here in this house tonight to come to an understanding of this repositioning for kingdom purpose and kingdom life. We ask you, Holy Spirit, we give you permission to give us insight that we would gain knowledge and gain understanding so we can apply your word effectively and efficiently to everything that you ask us to do. Tonight we ask, we simply ask, Holy Spirit, you as comforter, you as in teacher, mentor us tonight. Teach us through your word. And all of God's people say, amen. amen, amen, and amen. All right. Reposition means to adjust or to alter, to cause a change comparatively in a significant and important way. So tonight when, you release, when you're released from the sanctuary, you're going to see a cause and effect, not only as you leave here tonight, but as the week, days and the weeks progress. 
when we release these words, when we do these teachings from this house, it's not something that stays here and it's not just for that night. There is a progressive work of the Holy Spirit working in you and through you. You may see something, you may see somebody, you may be in a, a particular situation or circumstance and all of a sudden, the unction of the Holy Spirit will rise up in you and just know that you need to move upon that one thing or that circumstance, amen? This is the progressive work. This is where the Bible says we work out our salvation daily. Is somebody in the house. We work out our salvation. We work out our healing, our deliverance, amen? amen. Daily, on a daily basis. Amen. God never stops. So repossession means to adjust or to alter, to cause a change comparatively in a significant and important way. How? Let's go to the screen, guys. We got the amp on the screen tonight. The amp, the amplified. All right, reading from the amplified. This was, God, this was Jesus' his, his, his directions to his disciples. Too many D's in there. Hallelujah. And, you know, they were inquiring God and saying, you know, how do we purpose? How do we change? How do we learn to gain uh, what heaven has to offer us? And Jesus was telling them, don't worry about the things of the earth. Don't worry about the material things. Amen. Don't worry about those things. You can gain those things. How? Simply by seeking first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom. Somebody say his kingdom. And his righteousness. Somebody say his righteousness. His ways of doing and being right. The attitude and character of God. And all these things will be given to you also. So God tells us not to worry. You know, I just give this to you. It was just, this is funny. This was last week. So I have a thing for birds. I just like feeding the birds something my mother-in-law passed down to me. But I like feeding the birds. And so I got bird houses in the backyard. And, and so I go out and I throw seed, right? I throw seed out. And when I started doing this, I had a couple of doves who would come and, you know, the, those finch birds, whatever they are. And uh, I would throw seed and they would, they would come. Well, this has been something that's been progressive. Somebody say progressive. progressive. Repositioning, progressive, amen? So the more I've been uh, doing this on a regular basis, the more birds are coming. Every day, watch this, every day I have anywhere from 15 to 20 turtle doves that come and land in my backyard and they feed off the seed, right? And then the little fishes come and they fight in the bird feeders and all that stuff. But, um, so I was out there and I was sitting back and, wow, God, you're awesome. So something. And the Lord said, keep feeding them. And I thought, okay, I'm fine. I'm feeding them. He says, keep feeding them because the more you feed, more will come. And then he put the focus on Genesis he says, the more you feed my people, the more of my people will come. Amen. A little prophetic application in Jesus' mighty name. Okay. All these things. What things is God referring? Your, all your deeds, your acts of kindness, your prayers in secret. Uh, when you pray in secret, not looking for recognition of men. Listen what God's telling us. Knowing your prayers to God are being answered before you ask. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Amen. What are they? The ability to forgive unconditionally. And I hear this in the spirit. Uh, I hear this in, this in the atmosphere, in the spiritual realm every day. Every day. I hear voices crying out to God. Crying out to God. And I hear God saying, they're missing it. They're missing it because of their unforgiveness. Come on, somebody. They're missing in receiving their prayers because of their unforgiveness towards others and towards other things. Knowing your prayers to God are being answered before you ask. The ability for, to forgive unconditionally without restrictions or restraints by the same virtue the Father has forgiven you. Amen? In the same way God has forgiven us. No matter who's been in your face, come on, no matter who the enemy has used, flesh and blood, it doesn't matter. You got to forgive. And this is what God was telling me a couple of weeks ago. It, this unforgiveness in our hearts brings a blockage to be able to receive more from what God and what he wants to, and what he wants to talk to us about. Amen. In the same way, fasting with the same attitude, Jesus fasted. 
Hallelujah. And all these things, what things? The removal of debris. Rooted unwanted seeds. Again, seeds of unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment. Watch this. Hatred towards individuals and towards God. Just got a, a text last week. I said, what is this? People are angry, saints. And if they can't push it on somebody, if they can't push it on flesh and blood, they push it on God. So many people are angry at God because they don't understand him according to his word. Obstacles of hindrance and resistance cultivated by your enemies. All these things will be removed as you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So the word of God continues here. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. Again, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So as we progress and God gives these titles, we have to do homework. Come on. We have to read. We have to study. So my question that came up was, so what is the kingdom of God and his righteousness? I said, Lord, I need an explanation. And always and always and in all ways, God is faithful. You ask him a question according to his word, he'll take you into his word. He'll always take you into his written word. He'll always back himself, he'll always back himself up by his written word. God's kingdom is the reign. It's the rule. It's the sovereignty of Jesus. It is the realm where Jesus' authority is acknowledged and obeyed. Take note on this. The kingdom of God is the heavenly kingdom. It's the city of God. It's the celestial city. It's a place to abode or to abide. It's the, it's, it's the home. It's the habitation of God. Now, fasten your seatbelts because we're going to throw something into your lap right now. It's the habitation of the saints who live in eternity. It is the residing place of the angelic hosts, the four beasts of heaven, who cry, holy, <laughs> holy, Holy is the Lord of glory, which was and is and is to come. Revelations 4, 8. Heaven, heaven is where heaven's host can see the whole earth filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Just as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk uh, 4, 19. Now we're talking about Heaven, saints, and we, we, we'll break this down real quick. This is something Dr. Bree taught us when she was here a couple of years ago. We're, not ta we're talking about heaven. Where God abides. We're not talking about the heavenlies or the second, I say, just again, understanding, second atmosphere. We're talking about the heaven of God. Not the heavenlies, because when we do scriptures, we understand that in the heavenlies is where all the chaos and the confusion takes place as a result of the kingdoms of darkness and their kings. This is where the principalities and powers, the rulers of darkness, and the spiritual wickednesses are in constant work, laboring to bring things against the, the minds of God's people. Amen? The heavenlies are a parallel realm in the spirit where there is, oh, I already said that, where there's chaos and confusion. Saints, we say this all the time. We'll say it until we're raptured or we step into glory. All truth is parallel. So when we speak of the things, we need to understand this is happening. Things that are happening in the physical realm are also happening in the spirit realm. And there is chaos in the earth's realm because there's chaos in the heavenly realm. But tonight we've got a good word. Tonight we've got a sure word of prophecy. And I'm, I, need, I need your attention, please. Are your feet belts? Your feet belts, oh my God. Are your seat belts fastened? <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus. This same kingdom of heaven... 
His righteousness lives in you, saints. Those of you in the line, listen to this. The same kingdom of heaven, his righteousness lives in you. The Bible says that your body becomes a habitation of God's righteousness when you become born again. Along with all of his divine attributes of his characters and of his natures. So we want to hold you, put you on pause, keep that seatbelt on. We've got a prophetic word for you today. It's going to back up the prophetic songs that came forth from Lamar in, in Genesis. Are you ready? We need some movement in this house. I uh, said, so are you right? Okay, they're not moving in the sanctuary. Those of you in line, give us some thumbs up. I got my phone up here. Give some thumbs up. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There they go. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Here's the prophecy, saints. A deluge, a torrential downpour of my glory with power is about to take place in the earth to consume the hearts of my beloved son, sons and daughters. At my command, I will open heaven's doors and release heaven's anointing that will penetrate the lives of those who have inclined their ear to the voice of my spirit and have opened up their hearts to my heart for the salvation of souls to be prayed into my kingdom. Saints, an invasion is coming. Pastor Fred got it. Who else got it? I said an invasion is coming. Here's God's word. As my glory invades the earth, so will my righteousness invade the lives of you, my chosen. To those of you who have labored in the spirit through fasting and prayer, you will understand the power of intercession and its ability to reposition, to cause change in the physical realm when the labor of intercession is completed through you in the realm of the spirit. That's why we emphasize Emphasize, emphasize intimacy with God because in those times of intimacy with God, he'll teach you how to intercede and intercede or to pray according to his will, not your will and not the will of somebody else who comes and say, praise for me. He'll teach you how to intercede according to his will for that particular moment. The repositioning for executing my kingdom in the earth through my Righteousness can be found through my written word by revelation of Holy Spirit. That during those sessions of intimacy, where your hearts are prostrate, prone, laying flat before the feet of my beloved Jesus. It is from that place of surrender, along with the posture, your attitude, your hearts completely surrendered, Hand it over to me, where I, the Lord of heaven and earth, will come. Watch this. Oh, I don't know. Woo. Where I, the Lord of heaven and earth, will come with my compelling force in love. Watch this. Hear this. To excavate the land in your hearts. Removing the unwanted things prompted by the enemy. Anything that has been an obstacle or a hindrance for you seeking my kingdom first. To take hold of my righteousness, to gain all that my word has to offer you, says the spirit of the living God. Hear me today, my beloved. I am in the midst of you wherever you go. As you turn to the right, I'm there. <laughs> oh, somebody. When you turn to the left, I'm there. During your comings in and in your goings out, I am there. Wherever you place the soles of your feet, I am there. In your conversations, I am there. In the midst of your actions, I am there. 
with your hands lifted up and with your mouth filled with praise. I am there, says the Lord. Yes, says your Savior. Yes, says your Redeemer. Yes, says your Deliverer. Yes, says your Healer. Yes, says your Provider. Yes, I, the great I am, remain in the midst of everything you do and say with everything you are to me as my beloved. Tonight, take hold of this release. The dispensation of prophetic intervention. Run the race that is before you. Allow me to cultivate, plow, prepare to fertilize the lands of your hearts as you do intervention, involvement between you and I. Our intercession together will reveal hidden obstacles along with hidden strategies used by your enemies that have prevented you from seeking my kingdom to gain gain of my righteousness, says the spirit of truth. Can you receive that tonight? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Those of you that are lying here, thumbs are going up. Praise his name, praise his name, praise his name. Let's return to the topic. Somebody turn to somebody and say, repositioning kingdom purpose for kingdom living. (laughs) You're doing it. Hallelujah. You're responding. Thank you, God. Because you know me and the oil. I'll get going at you. (laughs) Shakaburiya rabose. In saints, and those of you that are watching online, no excuses. Those of you in the sanctuary, I'm just going to tell you what, what I see right now. A doorway, a portal from heaven has just been opened, and it's right here. Visually in the spirit, there's a door that has just been opened. We're going to gain access. Come on, we're going to gain access to walk into the heavenly realms tonight in Jesus' mighty name. To seek, to search for God's kingdom is to desire Jesus. Come on. To desire Jesus' rule, to be recognized and obeyed in three realms. Can we do a little teaching tonight? Yes, Brother Michael, teach us. Okay. Number one, three, one of the three realms within our own lives, through words and in actions. Amen. In the spirit, praying, and in the body, acting out. In the soul, where the will, the mind, and the emotions come under attack by the enemy. Amen? This we see the kingdom of God to desire more of Jesus because... As we said earlier, he did exactly what the Father told him to do. In the spirit, he was praying. And in his body, he acted out what God told him to do. In his soul, his will, his mind, and emotions, and we always refer back uh, to this concept. We really never, I've never really uh, read where Jesus prayed for somebody on the scene. But when I come to the understanding to where the Bible talks about Jesus praying, the Holy Spirit always takes me back to the, the, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane where you hear Jesus pray. Not my will. Look, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Prior to that, and in, in it's in John, the 15th chapter, where you hear Jesus not praying for an individual, but praying for us as a body of Christ, praying for himself for what God would have him to do. Amen? Number two in the realm. It's in our circle of immediate influence, our positioning, our environment in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm. The desires of knowing what's taken place where we can be influenced by the Holy Spirit, where we are positioned physically, but then have a posture. When I talk about posture, we're talking about an attitude. See, Jesus had an attitude to seek out the will of God in all things. Not in some things, but in all things. Amen? 
And then number three, as far around the, as the world as we can reach. Now, this was being downloaded. It was, I was reading this. This was being downloaded. And this is what, what the Spirit of God gave. As far around the world as we can reach through intercession. Come on. You as a praying warrior. Let me, let me, let me back up here. Through intercession, you as a believer can influence kingdom behavior throughout nations, over nations, and in nations. Okay, I'm here in San Jose, California, and I decided to get on my knees, uh, my knees here, and I begin to pray. And then Holy Spirit begins to come with an influence and a vision. And though the line, and this happened once before when we were here in our school of intercession, it was here on my face praying. And then in the spirit, I saw my body over the Philippine Islands. We talked about this. An intercession was being made. I didn't know who I was praying for, but I knew what I was praying over. Amen? And so what God is telling us here is that as you begin to pray like that, you may be praying to people you've never met or will ever meet until you step into God's eternal glory that has been prepared for you in heaven's realms. In other words, another example, download, boom, 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 boom. Praise the Lord. From the shorelines of a beach, from the peak of a mountaintop, on the living room of your floor, or to the front seat of your car, you can cause, watch, hear this, you can cause, oh my God, Jesus, you can cause the kingdom of heaven and God's righteousness to make gains into the earth. Your prayers will cause heaven's realms to become so activated that from the realm of the spirit, they will enter into the earth. Really, Brother Michael? Yeah. Your attention, please. What are realms? Somebody like that. My phone's lighting up. Hallelujah. Realms. A realm is a territory. An area of land which a sovereign king or queen rules. They rule with supreme, absolute, unlimited, and unrestricted power. It's somebody in the house. So here's the question for us tonight. How big is the territory of your heart? Is it restricted to its size as you have it now? Physically, yes. Can we prophesy to you? But not in the spirit. Physically, yes, but not in the spirit. Jabez knew all about territorial expansions from God's blessing. Let's go to the screen, gentlemen. First Chronicles 4.10. Jabez knew in all the way that he, he, he walked through his life and his spiritual destiny on the earth, he knew exactly how to gain, uh, gain access and to enlarge. Come on, enlarge somebody in the house. Enlarge his heart, his spiritual heart. He says, oh God. He didn't go to the prophet. He didn't go to the apostle. He didn't go to the the pastor. He says, oh God, that you would bless me indeed. And enlarge. Some would say enlarge. And enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. The whole teaching in that, we're not going to do that tonight. So today, I ask God to enlarge the spiritual territories of my heart. I need an expansion. 
I said, I need an expansion in order for me to do more what God wants me to do for his kingdom in the earth and for his kingdom people. I need my heart to be expanded. Why? So God can pour more of himself into my heart. Come on. So I can understand more of God through his word. So I would be more receptive and quicker to respond to the Holy Spirit when he says jump so I can say how high. Verse 33, what is the righteousness of God? It is God himself in all of his glory, his sovereignty and his majesty. Saints, hear Brother Michael tonight. God is righteous. God is, let's, come on, join me tonight. Let's begin, just start speaking in tongue. Come on, loosen this. Loosen your tongue in the sanctuary. Shakata, those of you that are online, Shulara Basanda, we're not showing off. Jelebraba, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man but unto God. Let God hear you tonight. He loves to hear you. He loves to hear from you in the spiritual languages that he has given you. Come on, raise your voice. If you need to stand up, stand up. Lift your hands to God and just begin to speak in that heavenly language. You that are at home, I see somebody at home right now dropping on your knees. Raising your hands and speaking in that spiritual language. Watch. My heart is expanding. The territory of my heart is expanding. Ragara as I pray in the spirit. My heart is expanding when I lift my hands to heaven and I begin to praise him and I begin to worship him. My heart is expanding. The mass of my, my heart is enlarging. As I go into intercession, as I I make prayer. Jorada bigger, bigger, larger, and larger and larger, oh God. Jeke, according to your word, according to your promises. Oh God, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, the territory of my heart tonight. Mayaraka. And as the days progress, and as the weeks come, and as the months pass, Maka, enlarge, oh God. Holy Spirit, I give you permission to enlarge when I praise you, when the sun goes up and as the sun goes down. When I praise you as the earth on its axis, which you created, begins to rotate and night becomes day and day becomes night. Enlarge my heart, oh God, in my worship time. Enlarge my heart in my praise time. Enlarge my heart in my intercession, oh God. Enlarge my heart. In times of prayer and fasting, is somebody getting this? I need to see some. I need a witness in the house. Is somebody getting this? What is a? You online, my brothers and sisters online. Mm, I love you. Praise the Lord. Thumbs are going up. Hearts are going up. Chi 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 cow. Hallelujah. What is the righteousness of God? It is God himself in all of his glory, sovereignty, and majesty. God is righteous. God is right. Romans 3, 21 through 26. It's not on the screen. Do some homework. It is God who has justified those who believe in Christ because of his anointing, sacrifice for their sins. Saints, hear your brother in the faith. If you're here tonight, you don't know Jesus, let me know. I'm going to anoint you with oil and pray you into the kingdom. Shekare. Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. Father, Father of glory, let us see tonight in this one scripture. Open our eyes to see the depth of the stripes that were laid upon Jesus' back. How deep those stripes go. Shekariaka. Knowing that Jesus paid the price for our ransom. Saints in 1 Corinthians 1.30, Christ is the righteousness from God. Hallelujah. Sorry, we kind of went into... Woo. I, I, let me pull back. Because we were over here. I know for some. Service. 
Oh, we were in the back room, the, the worship team, we were in the back there, and we had our communion. And we had the bread and we had the cup. And when, we, when I looked upon the wafer, I could see the stripes of Jesus' bike, the 40 stripes less one. Amen? And as I began to look at it, I could see the, the stripes, that his flesh opened, and that the stripes bearing down to his body, it, it went, they went down to eternity. Come on, are you with me? The stripes of Jesus' back pass, passes through eternity. Hallelujah. Then we had the cup. I looked in the cup, the same thing, the blood in that cup. Ooh, the new covenant. I looked into the cup and I could see the blood. And in the cup, there was no bottom, Pastor Fred. But it was full with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus saves. The blood that never loses its power. Hallelujah. Es sobratabacas. First Corinthians, on the screen please, 1 Corinthians 1.30. Here is the evidence of the repositioning. And with the repositioning comes a reposturing, an attitude of change. In verse 30, but it is from him that you are in Christ, who became to us wisdom from God, revealing his plan of salvation. And righteousness, I, I love this, and his righteousness making us acceptable to God and sanctification making us holy and setting us, uh, us apart for God. The redemption, the providing our ransom from the penalty of sin. It's the righteousness of God says it's acting in accordance with divine or moral law. And it frees the believer from guilt and sin. Romans 8, 1, again from the Amplified. Hallelujah. Therefore, this is, and this, this scripture explains how we, we escape from bondage. Come on. The enemy tries to bring guilt and condemnation into your mind. This is how we know we escape from, uh, from bondage. Romans 8, 1, therefore, there is now, present tense, every day, present tense, no condemnation, no guilty verdict or punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. Saints, it is a righteousness of God in you that brings, watch this, that promotes Kingdom living with kingdom purpose. The righteousness of God in you makes way for repositioning. Understanding the kingdom of God and his righteous, uh, righteousness operating in heaven realms. You get, under, you get the understanding of what's taking place in the, in the heavens. It's the operation, gives you the explanation of the operations in the earth realms, how they both are connected. But tonight we direct, administer to manage the word of God, apply to the kingdom, the realm, the land, the territories of your hearts. Listen, seek his kingdom and his righteousness for repositioning. To make an adjustment, to alter, to cause a change for kingdom living with kingdom purpose in a significant, noticeable way. To excavate, to excavate, wow. To ask. <laughs> Ah, I don't wear dentures, I promise. Listen, to excavate, to dig out, to dig up any unseen obstacles of somebody in the house, Amen. to remove the strat or expose the strategies that would reduce, lessen, demote, to downgrade the potential to advance with kingdom living and kingdom purpose. Hear this. Hallelujah. To excavate the, ter the territories of the believer's soul. Those areas in our heart, our, our mind, our will, and our emotions. Amen? And I'll throw this out to you because this is what's happened probably in the last 72 hours. 
I'm constantly going through and asking God to excavate, to get, to bring stuff up, to remove things, and and uh, get them out of get them out of my soul. And He does that. But in the meantime, when I'm working the soul here, when I'm praying here, Amen. The enemy is over here. Come on, trying to put stuff into my mind, the things that had just been excavated out of my soul. So there's a continual process that takes place for the repositioning. That we're constantly praying and asking God. So as we're, we're excavating here, removing those things here, and the enemy's coming here with uh, new thoughts, trying to put new seeds to be planted into that soil, there's got to be a continual turnover, come on, in, our, our, in the territory of our heart, in the soul, come on, of our hearts. Amen? Amen. Jesus. Therefore, a believer must understand uh, this, this was so good when I got this today. Oh, ba 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 ro de Hallelujah. Therefore, a believer must understand their title. Somebody say title. As a kingdom person. What are you talking about, Michael? God's word says, He, God, has made you as one of His own. In his image, as a king and a priest, to reign. This is sign language for reign. Come on. To reign on the earth. As a king, God created you in his image, made you to rule and to reign as a king, having dominion over the lands of your heart. Saints, come on. Hallelujah. God's got you in this school so you learn this stuff so when you get out of here, you can go out on the fields there and go after people, lay hands upon them and begin declaring salvation, healing, deliverance Amen. and provision in the hearts of his people. Amen. This concept of only being in church and only ministering to people in church, that's out the back door. God wants to take, take us into the highways and byways of this earth. People are hurting not only our brothers and sisters in the faith are hurting. Yes. But think about the people who don't know Jesus. Come on. Not only to rule and reign as a king over the land of your hearts, but to pray effectively and efficiently as a priest. Oh, man, this is good. Called by God to pray priestly prayers. To enhance, to increase to intensify the repositioning for the excavating of the land, the territory, the territory of your hearts. Yes. 